morning, good morning. I'm Melissa Nielsen with Waldorf Essentials. Today, we're talking about must have supplies. It's gonna be a really short video because you don't need any supplies. Like I thought, oh, I'll just sit down and I'll just say, you don't need anything and I'll get up and move. But there's a lot of cords around me and I don't wanna fall. So I'm just telling you that if you're coming to Waldorf and you're like, there's so much stuff to buy. Take a deep breath because you don't have to buy any of it. You don't have to buy any of it. What I'm going to show you today is what you can save your dollars for or set aside um, some school money for. So this is what we used to do years ago. Um, it's not a problem for us these days, but for sure, there were many, many very lean years that I would just, I would I would pull $2 a week out or $10 a month out of our budget and set it aside, put it, take it out of the bank and put it in an envelope. If you need to, if you're worried you're gonna spend it. And then guess what happens? If you're putting $10 a week in um, or $10 a month in about, in about six months, you've got a nice chunk of money that you can use for supplies. So don't let the cost of some of these supplies sort of puts you off because a lot of moms say to me, oh, I just can't do it. They're so expensive. Here's the deal. They last for years and years and years. When we left Utah almost six years ago, um, we had so many crayons, so many pencils because I'd had, you know, I have five children. So, you know, we were getting new ones every now and again. And every time somebody starts first grade, I usually get them a new set of crayons, a new set of pencils. And that's just theirs. So we had, we had a plethora and I sold them. There were so many that I was able to sell them and then have plenty for myself. So I, I want to encourage you in that they are almost indestructible and they last forever. And now while I say they're almost indestructible, that's not like a, hey, let's go break the crayons. Uh, it's not like you're licensed to do that. But what I am saying is that for the most part, these supplies are going to last you for years and years and years. And um, some of the things I'm gonna show you here are things that I've had for a really long time. And I'm also going to show you sort of what things look like brand new. Um, but okay, I'm gonna start with, um, what I'm gonna talk about is mostly lower grades. And I, I guess I could start with first grade even because first through third, even four, it's about the same. Um, the, you, you need about the same supplies. And, and again, you don't have to have any of this. You could easily, if you've got Crayola in your, in your, in your um, school basket, use that until you can use something else. Um, people ask me all the time, are they really that much different? They are. <laughs> so when you have the opportunity to use a very good beeswax crayon, and, and my preference is the Stockmar brand. I know that the there are a lot of people that like the Finlanas. I don't like the Finlanas. And, and it's not like a, oh, I think they're horrible, don't buy them. That's a personal preference for me. I've used them. I've used the blocks and the sticks, and they're not my favorite. They they still I still go back to Stockmar every time. So I, I think what I noticed, and I, they may have changed so um, in the last year or two, but when I first tried them, the breakage, they, they broke very easily. Now, I don't know if they broke easier because at the time they were not wrapped in um, paper. So um, if you've had really good success with those and you um, love them, please feel free to post here that you love them. I am okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Um, I, however, really like, um, I really like the stock marker ants. Um, this is a set of 12, and I don't know what it retails for, sorry, since we don't sell them anymore. I'm not sure um, what they retail for, but this is a set of 12, and these are the colors that come in here. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're fat crayons, and if your kids are used to skinny crayons, they might bulk at first, but they get used to it. Why are they fat crayons? Well, little hands need something fatter than the skinny crayons that society wants to give them. You know, we sort of have this, um, I, I sort of laugh because there's the... Um, there's the, the preschool crayons, the big fat ones that Crayola has. That's kind of the size they should be using until they're probably in about third grade. But then all of a sudden they get to the skinny ones and and it, it changes their grip and it changes the muscles in their hands. And um, yeah, 
this is this is a good buy for sure. So I really like these. These are the stock mark crayons. This is a set of 12. You can get a set of eight. I think we started with a little tin of eight. Um, we had a lot of tins of eight. And then because I've been at this, please keep in mind, do not compare your first or second year to the fact that I've been at this for 20 years. So we have stuff around that's been around the block. And so we've collected a lot over the years. So don't look at our collection and go, oh, I got to have all of that. No, just take your time and collect over time. One thing that I would I would do is I would put wish lists together for family that's buying um, supplies. And when they say, oh, well, I could buy 10 boxes of Crayola for what you, you know, for, for the, what you asked for that, I would say, I understand. And, and I know that your how you spend your money is really important to you. This is what we're using for our school. And so we have very good art supplies that um, come from another country and they are really good supplies. So again, go back to how the crayons look on the paper. And I'd be happy to do a side-by-side -side comparison for anybody that wants them. But I want you, if you're if you're a Crayola mom and you that's all you have, I want you to get your kids' crayons out. I want you to color hard with them. I want you to see all the wax that sort of flakes off. So that that waxy that flakes off, that doesn't that doesn't happen um, like with these. It's not um, it, it kind of is very smooth in how it goes on the paper. So the paper is another is another question I get a lot. So what paper is good for um, drawing? What paper is good for main lesson books? Should I buy my own main lesson books or buy my main, main lesson books or make my main lesson books? Yes, is the answer to that. I like really good sketch paper. Um, the uh, Canson brand is pretty good. I actually don't mind the Strathmore brand either. If it's good sketch paper or either sketch or mixed media is really good. Mixed media is much heavier. So you can do some um, watercolor, not wet on wet generally, but um, some watercolor with, uh, with that as well. And we use both. I really just, I really just like sketch paper. The Strathmore sketch paper, I think is a good weight for drawing, form drawing, for um, doing your main lesson book pages. And for many years, we would just buy that and, and, and then we would bind ours together later or I would put them all in a folder. Now you can absolutely, and I'm running out of room here, Daddy, I'm gonna hand you these crayons. I'm gonna run out of room here. You can absolutely um, buy a main lesson book that's already put together. I'm gonna try not to lose my mount. Of course I put that on the bottom. <laughs> So this is just a main lesson book. This is a nine by 12 size. It's bound on the side. Um, I like this for first through third grade or so. Sam is in seventh grade. He does not like the size. <laughs> it's too big. Um, I, like, I like this big size. They do come bigger. They come about twice this size. And a lot of, a lot of moms really like that for kindergarten and first grade. But I'm not a huge fan. We use those for my oldest sons. And um, I'm not a huge fan of the really big ones. So main lesson book. So then the question is, do I need the kind with the onion skin in between the pages or not? That again is a complete preference for you. A lot of moms like the onion skin because it kind of, the onion skin just sort of lays over their drawing and it keeps it more protected. I hate the onion skin. <laughs> this is why. Oh no, I drew my picture on the onion skin. <laughs> That's why I hate the onion skin. So I don't do the onion skin. Um, I usually do the, these or ones that have the spiral binding on the side. Um, we have a couple of lefties, and so the spiral binding is nice because it just folds over the back. Um, these are great because they come in many colors, and they actually come in a white now, too. I just bought a package of white ones that's nice because then they can just completely color them. I have them decorate it on the first day of school, and um, there are... I was going to say, show you how big they are page wise. I don't know how many pages are in here. That's not yet for me to not know. I'll count. Hold on one second. So 16, so 32 pages back in front. 16 and then back in front would be 32. How many of these do you need a year? really depends on your child and it depends on the grade that you're teaching. I start with about five 
And then we go from there. Sometimes we don't get through five. Sometimes we go through eight. Um, and I, that's one reason why I kind of prefer sketch paper often. And then we bind them together at the end. How do we bind? Um, we can bind them with, um, you could do a post binding at the end. You could sew them together. You could do, um, they make this stuff that you can glue on the side and then post or bind it together. Lots of ways. Or you can just put them in a nice portfolio. We've done that too. We actually, that tends to be what I do the most is put them there. But we have been using back to main lesson books um, from sketch paper for the last few years. So, so there's that. Um, I wanted to hop back to crayons for a minute. Do you need block crayons? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> but here's what the thing. You only need these three. Especially if you're you're working with um, Ziglinda De Francesca's videos, or you know you're working through the videos on our site, you only need these three. You don't need a box of all of them. In fact, I don't even have a box of all of them anymore. I don't. I used to, and then when we moved, um, when we moved six years ago, I just got rid of all the other colors because I don't need them. I, I seriously do not use them. And I know if you're using, say, um, uh, the folks over at Walderfish, I know they use all the colors, but for what I do, I, and I, I don't use their, their block crayon drawing. I use some um, Siglinda's. I use only three. Um, people ask me why. Well, so I really believe that learning to color with block crayons and only using these three and learning how to blend the colors because these three colors make all the colors of the rainbow. That really helps develop the will. It might make, it, might make kids mad, <laughs> but that really helps develop the will. And over time, they'll get better and better at it. And keep in mind, you're only block crayon drawing for mm, until about third grade or so. And a lot of kids by third grade are ready to move to more detailed drawings. And um, definitely for fourth grade. I always use these for background, though. For background, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I'm doing a, um, something with colored pencil, this will usually be the background. We usually do a wash of this on the background and then bring in our colored pencils. Can I hand you these too so they don't break in the floor? Okay, so there's that. You can buy those. Um, I know Pamela over at Meadow Sweet Naturals has them in sets of three like that. So let's talk about colored pencils. Colored pencils. These are Soraya's colored pencils. And hers, she has this nice little pencil roll. I should roll it up so you can see it. This is the set that I bought her when she started first grade. It's cute little, of course, I has unicorns on it because it's my kid. <laughs> um, these days it might have like unicorns on one side and Godzilla on the other side. I don't know. Though. It's not where she was in first grade, but it's definitely where she is now. So this carries all of her pencils. It's a longer one. So when she gets taller pencils, like I really like this size. This, these are the Furby shorts. Um, they're made by Lyra, and you can get them from anybody who sells Walder supplies. Um, they're short, and they're nice when they're in first and second grade, then they're being short because they um, are balanced and they're not so heavy. The taller pencils get a little bit heavier, and so they're a little bit harder. So people will say to me, again, why good color pencils over, say, the Crayolas? Well... Again, and I guess when I do my side-by-side -side comparison of the other things, happy to do my side-by-side -side comparison of pencils too. Um, the pencils are, they have rich, rich color and they last forever. So I would say not necessarily this bag because these are mine. These are mine. These are not the kids. These are my personal pencils. Um, I have them in the bag and I carry pencil sharpener with me all the time. I would say that the pencils, a lot of the pencils that we have, because we have a, a bin upstairs, are more than 10 years old. And um, in fact, the pencils are so sturdy because, you know, they're, they're encased in a good thick amount of wood. Um, the only way that my kids have broken them is by running them over with their bike. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> um, um, but he's the only child that would think to do that, seriously. Uh, maybe y'all have some kids like that. <laughs> I love him to pieces. But yeah, he's the only child that would ever think to run it over with this bike. I wonder what would happen if I ran this over with my bike. Yep, it will break. But guess what? It broke in half and we still used it. Like it's around here somewhere. It's like the broken pencil from when he was eight years old is, is around in this house somewhere because it's still like, it's still a perfectly good pencil. We still use it, um, even though it broke in half. So I, I would say these are an investment that you will buy once and you will use 
all your school years, all your school years. So this is my personal set. Um, it's a it's a combination of um, the Stockmar ones, and I also really like, really, really, really like these. Um, <laughs> pull them all out of here. Um, <laughs> They're not all in here because even though these are mine, sometimes my children like to take some of these current, these pencils. So these are, and they're not all here, but these are skin tone pencils. So, you know, skin tone isn't just this. Skin tone is lots of varying colors of tans and browns and dark browns. I love these pencils. These pencils are great. Um, so I would say they last forever. <laughs> so long. And um, yeah, I have a huge testimony of these pencils. Also, they're fat and triangular, which I know, again, if that's not what you're used to, you might be like, this doesn't feel good. It actually, your hand will thank you after a while because your hands get less tired. I do allow my big kids when, when they're about four, 13, 14, I will buy them the, the skinnier Lyra pencils. And the equivalent to those might be um, the Prisma color ones that you can find at the art store. Those would be a good, um, you know, if you're if you're shopping at say like Blix in person, you can find some really good supplies there. Um, there are some stores every now and again, I'll walk into an art store, not Blix. I've not seen it at Blix, but we were someplace in LA and I walked in there and I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> they have Lyra in here. So <clears throat> um, excuse me. Was that well, it was in Little Tokyo. It's a Little Tokyo. It was that um, that bookstore. Yeah. That had the. It was supposed to just be a bookstore. I walked in there and it was like all these pens, all these pencils. I was in heaven. <laughs> I was in heaven. It was great. Oh, okay. Question. So your question over there. Do you have a sharpener that works well for those? Our sharpeners yes. are thicker than our pencils eat them. This one, you buy the one that come that, that you can get from, I don't even know what brand this is. Made in Germany. I like them too because, oh, hopefully it's not full of, oh yeah, it's not. You can buy replacement blades. So about once a year I go through and check all the blades, make sure they're sharp enough. Also, one of the chores in my house for kids is to make sure all the pencils are sharpened, like once a week. I have to sit down and sharpen the pencils because I don't want that. I don't want that business happening when we're trying to draw. I want them all to be sharp. Crystal L. Farrell asks, <laughs> I have two ADHDers. How do you keep your items safe? And what's your process for discipline with using them cautiously? Okay, so my kids have grown up with these supplies. Um, you say you have two ADHDers. I have like two kids on the spectrum. I've got, you know, Jacob probably would have been labeled ADHD when he was a kid. Like that, I have busy kids. I don't have, I have, don't, I do not have docile kids. People always ask me, how do you get them to do that? I just do. Cause guess what? I'm in charge. I am. So when I say you have to be nice to these or your, or your dollars are going to go to replace the pencil with the, with this bike, guess what? He ponied up four bucks for a new one, even though it still worked. We bought a new pencil. So, you know, I am, I want my kids to have good supplies. And because that's something that's part of our life, they take care of their things. It's not a problem. So if you're having an issue with this, I think you should step back and go, am I showing them how to properly take care of their things? And maybe that's a place you work on. You work on being good with your supplies. Because if they see you take good care of things, they're going to take good care of things. If they see you be nonchalant about things, they're going to be nonchalant about things. And, you know, sometimes we have to have chats about it. Like, for instance, <laughs> yesterday, Eric is a huge Pac-Man fan. And there's a Pac-Man board game available at Target for anybody else who's a huge Pac-Man fan. So we went as a family on Saturday and we bought the Pac-Man board game. Soraya, who I'm sure would have all kinds of labels if she were in public school, was really having a very hard time breathing out and letting daddy set up the board game. So much so that she like put a mark or something on it, right? Yeah, she, <laughs> she, she got excited. And she got overly excited. 
And then she was frustrated because I, you know, I, I made her, I pulled her back and I just want to watch. She's eight. She turned eight in April. Just want to watch. I'm so excited. Just want to watch. I said, I know. But you know all those unicorn Tokidoki guys that you have in your room? Yes, I love them. They're mine. I love them. I said, what would you feel if daddy came in and bunged those up? <sighs> I wouldn't like that. I said, well, how do you think daddy's feeling right now? <sighs> I'm so sorry, daddy. I will sit here and be patient and wait. So we have discussions with them about things that are important to us so that they also have things that are important to them. If you have kids that are in destruction mode all the time, you've got to stop and ask why. Slow down, slow down. If we are in a big hurry, they're going to be in a big hurry. If we instill that we're confident and that we can be, you know, like present, they're going to start learning how to be confident and present. A lot of kids that are so busy have a lot of anxiety going. So you want to sort of dial into like, what's, the, what's going on with that anxiety? Where's that coming from? What can I do to slow it down? Because it can absolutely happen. And it teaches kids. It teaches kids when they, when, when they mess up and they have to replace something, it teaches them, hey, wait a minute. This lady is serious. <laughs> I'm not running over a pencil with my bike anymore. She is serious stuff. She does not want these broken. So we are going to enjoy them and have fun with them. And we're not going to run over them with our bikes. Um, I will say that, like I said, we, we have always had supplies available. Um, and so I have them available from the time they're really small. And this is one of those things. This is something that Soraya, this was Soraya's and I just bought her a new one. I took this one because I have, we use it for co-op and, um, <laughs> and I was not going to ask her if I could use her new one for co-op. So I'm use, I gave her a new one and I'm using this one for co-op. So this is a paint palette. <laughs> Bless you. This is a paint palette and I, I promise I can get it open. <laughs> there we go. And we have had this one since she was probably three. And at three, she could um, get, a, a, we have these cups, little, um, these, there's these great cups. I don't have one down here. But they're by Melissa and Doug. If you look them up, they're on Amazon. I think they might even be in my Amazon store. Um, they're by Melissa and Doug, and they're coming threes. And they are spill-proof paint cups. And I know they're probably intended for, like, tempura paint, but that's not what we use them for. We use them for water. Um, there's a fill line in them that's about this high. The cup's about this high. The fill line goes about here. Um, you fill that with water, and then there's a screw-on cap. And the screw on cap goes all the way down. And then there's a little hole in the top of the cap. So if the cup gets spilled, the water doesn't come out. We've taken those cups in the car, on the airplane. They're great because when they're really little, like three, you can start to instill things in them like, okay, well, if you want to paint, you can paint. Here's your stack of paper. And we just had, you know, like a ream of computer paper. Okay, thank you. I just got green paint on me. We had a ream of computer paper that she could always get to. She you know, grab her paint palette. These are great. And they're really rich colors. Even my, even my adult daughter used them a lot and she's an artist. She grabbed her paint palette and it was available for her to get. It was not up high. It was available for her to get and use. And so she would get that and then she would get, um, we have these really nice fat brushes. I'm going to talk about the brushes for a second. She'd get the brush and she'd get her cups and, and she'd be, fine for hours, hours. So now granted she's a particularly odd child, but she would still be fine for hours just painting on her own because I put some responsibility in her hands, even at three. So she knew that, hey, I can get this. I can do this on my own. I can paint whenever I want. I can draw whenever I want. I keep all of these art supplies within reach for kids. So yes, I've had children draw on walls, um, essential oils are really good at getting um, uh, the wax crayons off walls. In fact, there was a thing by my ex-husband used to work for Melaleuca, and I can remember one time Jacob just, of course it's Jacob, all over the wall in our house. And there's a, like a cleaner that Melaleuca made that we, so it's like tea tree oil that we use to clean off um, the walls. And it worked perfectly. It worked, it worked great. So, so keep these available to your kids. Do not make them um, some pie in the sky, you can only use it at X, Y, and Z time. 
I like keeping all supplies available to them all the time. So I'm going to talk about these paintbrushes really quick, and then you had a question. But let me. The Cole Schwartz asks, if you are homeschooling two kids, how many sets of things do you buy? Two sets of pencils, one for me and one for them, or three sets? It's totally up to your budget. In a perfect world, I would buy a set for everyone. That's my reality now. It has not always been my reality. Sometimes we've had to share. Sometimes I will pool the money and buy one bigger set for us to all share. But I would rather each person have their own. But again, that's in, a, in my world. You don't have to be in that world right now. I was not in that world all the time. So I want to draw your attention to these two paintbrushes. This one is a new one, both by Macarius. This one, you can see, has been beat up. This paintbrush is... Let's see, Harry's 22. This paintbrush is 16 years old. It's still a little wiggly now at the top. Still used almost every day. There's the paints coming off. I like it now they don't have paint on them. These are the kindergarten paintbrushes by Macurious. This is a size 22. You want big, fat brushes. Big, fat brushes for at least first and second grade, probably third, too. You want them to know how to move the paint on the paper, and you want to teach them how to pick up paint from the paper. You want to do all those things. If you're thinking filling, willing, remember we go through some of this in our painting videos. Um, if you're not, you should become one. Now's a great time. Um, but these these paint brushes are great. The the bristles are um, you know uh, they're they're nice and and they take a beating. So like this is a newer one. I think we bought this one within a year. This one. Like I said, it's about 16 years old. It's still in good shape. Still in good shape. So um, still the same size as you're both a 22, I think. So you want big, fat brushes. And, and we use that. These are the brushes that were available to Soraya with her paint palette when she was little. And um, also with the paint palette, I will say this. When they're little, because there's a lot of colors here, I only put four colors in here at a time. I because these pop out. So it's so nice you can pop them out. Pop them back in. It's nice because if you only need to replace one color, um, then you can. But I would only have a couple of colors in there at once. Um, especially when she was little. So, you know, and then, then as she got older, she might have some complementary colors in there. Now she has them all. In fact, she said to me when I bought the new one, she goes, oh, I get to keep all the colors in here. <laughs> I said, Yes, you do. Um, my reason being because it, it, you want them to play with color when they're little and learn how to mix and um, see what colors come from, you know, the primaries. So um, that's my reasoning behind there only being a few colors when they're little. Okay, let's see. Let's talk about beeswax. Beeswax. So again, you don't need any of this. This is just fun stuff that you can, that you can have. Steiner said you could model from the mud in the road. So um, don't take, like beeswax is wonderful, but he didn't have beeswax in the first schools. He didn't have any of this stuff in the first schools, all right? So keep that in mind. All of this has been created after. So they worked with what they had. Um, while this is great stuff to have on hand, it, it, you don't, don't beat yourself up if you can't. Um, this is a larger set of beeswax about once a year, no, that's a lie. This this one, this box is probably two years old. I buy a box, a bigger box. I like the bigger box because it has all the colors, it has more colors in it. The box of 15 has got, uh, I'm gonna see if I can do it, this many colors in it. And um, what do you do with beeswax? Beeswax is great for modeling. Again, if you are one of our students, hop over and check out the modeling lessons. Um, Beeswax is hard. So if you are somebody who's like, I just, I can't make this work. There's a lot of moms that hate beeswax until they realize, oh, wait a minute, I can warm it up. And then it's actually quite fun to work with. So unless you have a husband like mine who seems to be able to turn everything into putty, um, you know, you're going to get it like this and that's going to be hard and you're going to try to figure out what, like how you get it to do what you want it to do. So you want to warm it up. Um, you want to put it... You put it in your bra, you put it in your armpit. I have kids put it in their armpit before I start a story. I'll give them, and you don't give them the whole piece. I give them like, you know, half or a third of a piece. And um, 
And in this comes, there's actually a handy dandy little guide in here, how to guide. But I will give them, um, I will give them like a half a piece before I start a story and have them either put it in their armpit or in their knee pit or in their elbow pit. And it gets it nice and warm. Or if all of this fails, we'll hand it to dad. You could also put it in a baggie and put it in a pot, a bowl of hot water. That's that really works. Um, we've even taken that to co-op. We've taken hot boiling, boiling hot water in a thermos. And um, I've taken a bowl and um, put the, you know, hot water in the bowl and then put the beeswax in there and it gets it nice and pliable. So beeswax is a great thing to have on hand when you're working on modeling for the early grades. You can also use clay. We've used clay quite extensively. There is a thought that you don't want to use um, heavy earthen material with younger grades, but I kind of do anyways. I, I think that it's from the earth and Steiner would have used it. So it's okay. Yes. Melinda Gibbs says, I just ordered the natural colored wax. Did you say if colored was preferred? Oh, no. I like, Here's why. I like the natural colored wax um, because then nobody fights over who. I want pink. I want blue. <laughs> so for many years, I just bought that. But I do. I do like the colors. I mean, we especially when you're doing something that you want to show color. So we do a lot of beeswax modeling in fifth grade with botany. And so you want there to be a lot of color for that. Um, I would say my funniest beeswax moment was one time. Um, so I often will take beeswax to church and to keep like little hands busy and mouths quiet. <laughs> so um, I remember we were sitting in the pew as before Sarai was born and Ellie and I were making these like beautiful little angels. So reverent, so reverent. I had handed beeswax to daddy and the boys. I wasn't paying attention to them. We're just making these angels. It was like near Christmas time. Making these angels were so, we were so proud of our, our little angel. Then I look over and daddy's got Pac-Man and ghosts along the end. He like has them actually sitting on the edge of the pew. <laughs> Do you remember that day? <laughs> Somewhere that picture <laughs> Probably so. We had three boys at the time because Samuel was probably two maybe <laughs> it was funny it was funny um but we often take beeswax to places that people go what is that and where can I get some so um you know I'm, I'm usually like giving my beeswax away to people um so anyways that's beeswax again you can also use clay I buy a hunk of clay every couple of years and we use it a lot I, I extensively use clay um with things like um geometric modeling when they're older and but I also use clay when they're younger especially if they're having um, fine motor issues and you're trying to get them to really use their hands clay is a great way to work with that and you sort of start with um, forming a, a, a ball or a sphere and then move um, on with other shapes from there okay what have I not done let's see oh how about these pens so this would be for the older child Fountain pens. These are actually not very expensive. These are pretty, these are pretty, um, you know, well-priced. So these are the fountain pens that are by Mercurius. They're for kids. So, I mean, I have one too. I actually have a really nice glass fountain pen. <laughs> My children do not use. Um, but so, so this is, I like these a lot because they're easy to take care of. There's a wooden barrel and um, then the ink sits in there. Oh, Samuel needs more ink in here. Um, I sort of stole his. There's an ink, you put the ink well in there and you just pop, it just pops in. Um, fun fact, that's a, actually a standard size, the ink, the thing of ink. So you could go to like Michael's and buy others because they have them that fit in here. In fact, I'm seeing, I think this is green. Um, so you could find um, others. I know that at Michael's, I found um, I found a package that had pink, purple, green, like all colors, and that was a lot of fun to play with. So these are great because they they take stand the test of time. This one is Sam, so it's not as old, but I do have one upstairs that I'm that I'm using now that was that belonged to my big kids, and um, so it's probably ten or more years old. Then there's this, and um, I had used this, I think, with my bigger kids, and then I had forgotten about it, and my dear friend Anna Catherine said, hey, aren't you using this corrector pen? I was not, but I am now. So this is a corrector pen. It's great for them to go together. 
if they make a mistake, they're not freaking out. This is the correction part, and then they can rewrite it. Oh, it is a, a clay clay question. Okay. From Nicole Schwartz. Fimo clay or ceramic clay? Oh, ceramic clay, not the Fimo stuff. The Fimo oh. stuff is great if you're using it for, um, if you're making like ends for knitting needles, and, and if you're making things that you want to bake, but you really want like ceramic clay. And actually they have that. If you're going to like Michael's, they have that in a big block. It's about this big, weighs about 10 pounds and they have it. It's um, in that same section on the bottom shelf. And I, th I think it might even just be called ceramic clay or call a place that does ceramics around you and just say, I need a hunk of clay. And, and it's usually pretty cheap. I, I would say less than $10 and it'll last you a year. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is the last thing on my list. Knitting needles. <sighs> Knitting needles. Oh, there's some Handwork supplies. So, you know, starting in about first grade, I actually like to make, we make our own knitting needles in first grade. So how do you do that? So this is not a set that I made and I don't know why I didn't bring a set down that I made, but I can post them on Instagram later. I'll post them in our stories later. Um, and when we do, I'll do a video that's kind of comparison, but I'll show you. So I get dowels that our, are about the quarter inch size. So they're teeny with the, and, and I like the six inch, but we are the, I usually buy like the, the nine to 12 inch, but then we cut them down, cut them down so that they're about six inches for first knitters. Then we take that female clay and I give them two or three colors and I let them have at it and they make ends for them. And then we bake them and then we glue them on. If you have been following us for a long time, you probably can imagine there's a picture that I have that, that has a whole bunch that we did for co-op because we do this for our co-op every year. All the first graders make new knitting needles. So um, so once you've got the dowel, we sharpen it with the same sharpener that I just showed you, sharpen it up, um, and then I make them do take sandpaper and they sandpaper it down. Um, you want the ends to be not crazy sharp, so you're gonna take the sandpaper across the end too, so that it's a little bit dull, um, but you want it to be really smooth. So then after the sandpaper, then we go over it with um, some beeswax. I like beeswax polish. Um, I don't have a specific brand that I like. I've, I've used actually a couple, but you want to use like a nice um, natural polish that will um, soak into the wood. So I, I rub that on, have them rub it on, and then I let them sit for a week and then they're ready to use. So, and you don't have to let them sit for a whole week, but definitely for a couple of nights, have them sit. Um, and then we use them. So beyond first grade, like when they outgrow those first knitting needles, because those first knitting needles are great for those smaller projects. But as they go into second grade, they're going to need longer needles for longer, for bigger projects. Stick with wool, or not wool, wood, sorry. <laughs> stick with wood um, wood or bamboo these are bamboo needles um, wood or bamboo do not use plastic or metal plastic is kind of it's plastic it doesn't it doesn't do very well metal will pull the warmth out of your hands and it will make your hands tired faster so you want good needles now I will tell you these are clover needles that I got at Michael's and I think they were probably six bucks. They were not crazy expensive. I have some really nice expensive needles, some Brittany needles and some um, other needles that were nice and beautiful and expensive. But these are not those. These are still great needles. Um, and a great place to find pretty needles that aren't crazy expensive is nitpicks.com. So I like to dye yarn with um, our kids at co-op. And then when you're, if you're not in a co-op, dye yarn with your kids at home. Um, we've got a lot of information on like how how do you do yarn? We just do it with Kool Aid. We we buy Kool Aid. That's like the most fun that I ever have. Whenever I go <laughs> to buy it, the people are like, "What in the heck are you doing with 500 packages of Kool Aid?" <laughs> they always get the weirdest looks. You guys are gonna have fun. And I go, "You notice there's no sugar here, right? I'm just buying the Kool Aid." <laughs> um, so you want it? All of the colors that are there will make. We'll make the colors you need for you. And one of the best places in San Diego to, to find, go, yes. To find the most colors of Kool Aid, including, like food the, for ones, less. including the ones you don't know exist. I know. And there sometimes it's really hard to find. There's some like obscure colors, and you find them and you go, they make the most beautiful yarn. And um, so I'll just tell you the process really quick. I don't have any down here. I should have brought, I have some upstairs, but um, so we put it in a mason jar. 
a larger mason jar, not a giant one, but a larger one. You can do about 30 yards, 30 to 60 yards at a time in a mason jar. You put the, um, I put one packet of Kool-Aid at the bottom with um, about three tablespoons of vinegar. And I don't usually measure it. I just eyeball it like this much vinegar and then the Kool-Aid on top. And then I dump the yarn in and then I fill it all the way up to the neck of the bottle. And then I put another, another packet of Kool-Aid on the top. Screw the lid on, shake, 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 shake. Make sure you shake it all around, get all that Kool-Aid mixed in there with that wool, stick it in the sun. And what will happen is the sun will do all the work. So you'll know it's done because you'll go out and you'll look and all that's left in your bottle is water. And all of the color will have impregnated into the yarn. But it has to be good wool yarn. Um, it does not work this way with cotton because cotton is just a... Uh, it's just different. The process for cotton has to be a little harsher because the fibers are different. So it works really well with wool. And um, it, it's so much fun. <laughs> I love to have like a rainbow of jars on my banister outside <laughs> at our house. And then, and then you know, we, we uh, rinse it and we have so much fun. Um, so the question over here, what kind of yarn would you use for it? Sorry, I missed it. Wool yarn, good wool yarn. You can find, um, I like at nitpicks.com, I like their bare wool of the Andes yarn. It's, it's just natural and it comes in a bunch of different weights. I buy bulky weight for the young kids. For the, you know, first and second graders, they usually get a bulky weight yarn. And um, with that bulky weight yarn, because you've got knitting needles that are only six, you know, six inches wide, um, you want to keep their projects to anything that's under about, you know, 16, 15, 16 stitches so that they don't fall off. Um, so those first knitting projects might be a pot holder or um, for uh, for our kids at our co-op, we're doing, we have two mamas about to have babies. So we're going to make some quilt squares and then they're going to put them together. And we've done that before. That's been a lot of fun. So I think that was all the supplies that I brought down here. But again, I want to emphasize there's nothing that is mandatory for you to buy. Take your time, build it up, have a good time with it. Don't let it stress you out. Don't let it be something where your husband's like, I can't believe you spent this much money on yarn. I can't believe you spent that much money on crayons. Instead, you kind of want to sell him on it and buy it slowly if that's an issue for you. If it's not, have a good time. Have a good time. This stuff will last forever. And um, well, maybe not forever, but for a long, long, long time. And um, it just, it stands the test of time and the, the, results that you get with them. These supplies are beautiful. So but the paint palette is not for wet on wet watercolor. The Stockmore paints are my favorite for wet on wet watercolor. You can buy stuff at the, at the art store, mix it yourself. Yes, you absolutely can. I like the Stockmars because they're like a, they're thick and then you, you add water to them and the colors are beautiful. If you are just starting out, I highly recommend just buying the three circle colors. Circle red, circle yellow, circle blue. Because those three colors will give you all the colors in Goethe's color wheel and will be perfect for all the you know spectrum painting that you're gonna do for first and second grade. Then you can mix or buy other colors as I get older. I'm kind of a hard mom. I kind of still make them mix it on the paper or I allow them to mix it in a cup and use that. Um, I'm just kind of snarky that way. I like to build the wheel. I'm all about building the wood. Otherwise, good paint paper. So again, don't soak Strathmore paint paper. <laughs> if you do, don't soak it for very long because it will fall apart. So the paint paper you buy at like Michael's or the craft store, it's like cold pressed. So it's different. It's different than the paint paper you're going to buy from say Mercurius or that's a design for wet and wet. Wet and wet paper is designed to be soaked. And and so it's not, it's not, doesn't have that same quality to it. So they're, they're very different. So if you've got stuff from the craft store, that's great. Just don't soak it. Instead, take a, a clean brush and, and wet it before you paint. It will give you just about the same results. Um, and then third grade, I would say about the same. You're going to want some colored pencils in there. You can get away with most of first grade without colored pencils and sort of buy them at the end of first grade or at the beginning of second grade. Um, 
by the end of first grade, they're going to want to not be using stick crayons to write with anymore. They're going to be wanting to use pencils. A lot of kids want to use pencils from the get-go. I also use colored pencils often in main lesson work. And here's the deal, like mistakes happen, yes, but we turn every mistake, like I want you to pretend I'm Bob Ross, <laughs> into a happy little tree or a happy little accident. You don't turn, you don't freak out. There's no freaking out that happens. And listen, I'm a choleric who likes to control things. So when I make a mistake, I'm like, Ugh. but I turn it into a flower, <laughs> turn it into something else. So, you know, I, on a first graders or second graders paper, you might see six or eight flowers because they've made lots of mistakes. That's okay. That's okay. We still prefer to use the colored pencils rather than um, the graphite ones. We have the graphite ones and we'll use them sometimes. Like in math, I think it's important when you're doing math for older kids to use a pencil that can erase. And I have a rule of no pens, no pens in math. Um, which, you know, I can remember my teacher saying that to me and be, me being like, I know better than you, but you know what? No pens in math. Um, so uh, the question over here is like any new items for fourth grade? Fourth grade, you're not going to use the stick crayons as much. You're not going to use the block crayons as much. You definitely want a good uh, array of colored pencils. You're still going to be painting, probably not as much as you were. Um, that's okay. Um, definitely modeling, but you want a good set of colored pencils when you start to do um, geometry work for fifth, sixth, seventh, and beyond, um, because you know you want some nice colored pencils for that that are nice and sharp. Um, you, if you've got a child that's in sixth and up, maybe even fifth and up, you want a nice um, sort of uh, a really nice compass. I don't buy the crappy ones that are a dollar at Target. I would set yourself and buy a nicer one. Helix is a good brand of compass. Um, they actually, a lot of Waldorf suppliers will sell a good Helix compass. You can buy the Helix compass at Blix. Um, yeah, they're good. When you can get a good one, they'll last you a long time. And they're doing a lot of sort of exact stuff later. So you'll want think think about your your career, your schooling career is like, like this is a place where we want to spend extra dollars in having nice supplies because when we spend the time and the effort in putting together nice lessons, we want the supplies to reflect that. We want the outcome to reflect that. So, um, you know, take the time and teach your kids how to really take care of their, their supplies and their supplies to take care of them. So you guys have a good week.